Datuk Sri Najib Razak sought help from parties in the UAE as he scrambled to shake off money laundering allegations in 2016. In one of the phone recordings released by the MACC today, Najib called UAE's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan a day after the US DOJ announced the scandal involving 1MDB. He also asked for a personal request to fabricate an agreement that would clear his stepson Riza Aziz's name in the fiasco. Meanwhile, in another recording, ex-MACC chief Tansri Zulkifri Ahmad, then a deputy public prosecutor in the AG's chambers, was heard leaking information about an investigation paper to Najib. In another audio clip, Najib's wife, Datin Sri Rosmah Manso, is heard advising him on how to take control of the situation. MACC Chief Commissioner Latifa Koya says the recordings demonstrated elements of abuse of power, obstruction of justice and fabrication of false evidence through foreign aids. She said the recordings were proven authentic and will be given to the relevant authorities while the agency continues with its part of the investigation. Dato Rizal Manso, formerly Dato Sri Najib Razak's aide, has been unexpectedly acquitted of graft charges linked to a Sarawak solar hybrid project and could potentially turn prosecution witness against Datin Sri Rosmah Manso. Rizal and Rosmah were earlier jointly charged for soliciting and taking hundreds of millions of ringgit in kickbacks from the contract. That changed after the prosecution dropped all charges against Rizal at the case management hearing today. Senior Deputy Prosecutor Datuk Sri Gopal Sri Ram told The Edge, Rizal, who was also Rosmas' aide, may be called in as a witness, depending on the course of the case, which will start on February 3rd. The FBM KLCI took a tumble in tandem with global markets after Iran fired rockets at US-led forces in Iraq. The benchmark composite fell to as low as 1,587.43 points, although it retraced some losses to end the day still 21.94 points or 1.36% lower at 1,589.1. Across Bursa, Malaysia, 3.86 billion shares with 2.2 billion ringgit exchanged hands. Only 161 counters gained against 795 losers, while 382 counters were unchanged at the closing bell. Rakuten Trade Head of Research Kenny Yee says the Malaysian market was not the only one affected. He says the sell-down should continue for the rest of the week and is advising investors to stay on the sidelines until the situation stabilises. Meanwhile, the flaring tensions between the US and Iran also saw Malaysia Airlines shunning Iranian airspace. Like many other commercial carriers, Malaysia Airlines is steering clear of the conflict airspace of Iran to limit any threats to their planes. It also clarified that it does not fly over Iraq's airspace on its flights to and from London, Jeddah and Medina. FGV Holdings Chairman Datuk Wira Azha Abdul Hamid believes the worst is behind the plantation giant. In a letter to shareholders, Azha admitted there are still some lingering challenges with subsidiary MSM Malaysia Holdings. But he gave his assurance there are plans underway to address each and every one of them sooner rather than later. He added that the board of directors intends to transform FGV into an organisation that is not wholly dependent on CPO prices, but rather a major player in the agriculture and food industries. Meanwhile, the conglomerate is still working on right-sizing its manpower cost, having cut its staff by 8.5% to 17,146 people. For 2020, he said the target is to achieve 50,000 tonnes of feed production and launch two new premium feed formulation for dairy cattle. The group is also aiming for 200 million to 300 million ringgit in annual revenue for its renewable energy division as it further unlocks the value of waste it produces as part of its daily milling process. Putrajaya is looking to collect 155 billion ringgit in taxes in 2020, 5% more than the 147 billion ringgit it targeted last year. This is despite the Inland Revenue Board or IRB having missed its 2019 target by 1.92 billion ringgit, with total collection standing at 145.08 billion ringgit. Finance Minister Lim Guan Ng explains that it doesn't matter as the government always sets a higher target. 
He adds, IRB's tax collection approach will be softer and friendlier compared with how it was during the previous administration. The PH administration, he says, feels engaging with taxpayers is the best way forward to ensure better tax collection. There are, however, no plans to continue the special voluntary disclosure program for tax evaders.